Hey hooligans, welcome back. Thought you'd enjoy that little rendition. Even if you didn't, you can it anyway. Welcome b -b 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 back for some more Shelton shenanigans. Obviously, we're off to a shenanigany start. So, um, happy Friday! So we are going to do the in-between sections for um, the sections after chapter 12, 13, 14, 15. That's not too bad. Last week we had like six or seven, so we only have four this week. We're doing much better. Um, so, let me get to the right spots. How are y'all doing? Are y'all doing good? It is the last day of having to fill out the questions. Woo! So for those of you that have actually been doing all the questions, super duper proud because, I mean, y'all are the true MVPs. Now, others of you have just been kind of like following along and not really doing the questions. So that's kind of boo-boo in comparison. But it's okay. We are to the end of the questioning portion of the book. So next week, all you have to do is listen. I'm actually going to post the rest of the book today. So that is super exciting. Uh, so you will get the rest of the chapters. Um, we're gonna do the in-between sections, and then you're gonna get chapters 16, 17, 18, 19, and the in-between sections for those. I'm gonna post those all today. So be sure you are watching them in the correct order. Obviously the book is gonna be really confuzzling if you get them out of order. So, super exciting. Anyway, um, we are going to go ahead and start. So I'm gonna read the questions, because again, today is the last day of questions. These questions only apply to the stuff I'm reading in this video. So the rest of the videos for chapters 16 through 19 have nothing to do with these questions. There are no questions for that. I just want you to listen to those so that you can know how the book ends. Duh. Anyways, so we are going to do four different sections today. Um, the first one is on civilian deaths. So a civilian is someone who's not involved with the war, so they're not a soldier. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get started on that section. It's super short. I can show it to you right here. So super short. Um, and there's only one question about it. It says, what increased the number of civilian deaths? So I'm going to go ahead and read it and we can go ahead and move on from there. So civilian deaths. Civilian mortalities, which means deaths, have always been underreported in wars that, and, and are nearly impossible to verify or to like confirm how many people have died that aren't soldiers. Most historians and governments are forced to guess at the numbers because not only are birth and death certificates, church records, tax rolls, and immigration documents frequently destroyed during combat, but the true numbers are, in many cases, never counted in order to hide them from a country's own people as well as the enemy. So that was a lot of information, so I'm going to slow down and read that one one more time. Okay, most historians... P.S. This is the answer to the question. Most historians and governments are forced to guess at the numbers because not only are birth and death certificates, church records, tax rolls, and immigration documentation frequently destroyed during combat or during battle, but the true numbers are, in many cases, never counted in order to hide them from a country's own people as well as the enemy. Hopefully the subtitles got it correct that time. I know sometimes the subtitles say different words than what I'm saying. Once mass weapons such as cannons and guns were developed and used by the military, far more civilians were killed simply by being at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's not perfect, but we're done with that section. Okay, so y'all have the choice to either pause this video here, hop over to the Google Doc, 
and then come back, or you can, I guess, listen to them all at once and then go do it. Totally up to you. So, um, if you're going to pause, then pause. Um, if not, then we are moving on. Um, ow. Next section is on NYC. Anyone know what NYC stands for? Anybody? Anybody? Raise, raise your hand. Don't just shout it out. You in the back. New York City is correct. Great. Great job. New York City is correct. So NYC stands for New York City. Um, so that is what our next section is on. There are dos preguntas, two questions um, for this section. And um, there's no, this is the only one with two, two questions. So um, the first question says, what was the population of New York City? So I'm going to say it in here. So how many people, what is the population of New York City? And number two, how did most American soldiers die in the war? Two easy, schmeasy, lemon squeezy questions. So no complaining. Moving right along. New York City. Super short. Great. New York was the main city where prisoners of the British troops were held. By the end of 1776, there were over 5,000 prisoners in New York. And since the population of the city was only 25,000, more than 20% of the people within city limits were captives. At the time, at that time, there was only one prison in New York. So the British held prisoners in warehouse buildings or on Royal Navy ships anchored in the harbor. Although these ships were built to hold 350 sailors, the British kept over 1,000 prisoners at a time on board. That doesn't seem safe. The only latrines, that means bathrooms, the only latrines were buckets, which soon became full and spilled into the prisoners' sleeping quarters. Be grateful. Disease was rampant. At first, an average of five or six prisoners died on these ships every day. In the end, more American soldiers died in prison than in actual combat or battle. <laughs> Moving right along. So, if you want to pause the video, we're going to pretend I paused. Um, if not, we are going to move right along. So, this section is on covert communication. Covert communication. So, that means like secret or disguised communication. Sneaky, sneaky. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Here's the question. Okay, I lost the questions for a second. So, there's only one question about this section. Um, it says, how did the armies disguise their messages? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, super short section per usual. Covert communication. Covert, by the way, is spelled C-O-V-E-R-T. Covert. Fun word of the day. Both the American and the British military forces disguised their communications so that messages could not be easily read if captured by their enemies. Prearranged letters or words replaced other letters or words, all of which had to be memorized by huge numbers of different people. But the secret co codes were frequently rude. But the secret codes were se were frequently and easily broken. Mathematical codes were experimented with, but the complexity limited their effectiveness especially given the length of time it took to pass messages from one party to the other. Invisible inks, oh, this is like those little things you get at the book fair. Invisible inks that can be made visible with heat or a series of chemicals, as well as messages hidden in common publications, such as pamphlets and, we'll say books, and books were common ways to ensure the security of sensitive information. So they couldn't just like 
send a message like, hey, we're about to go attack this place at this time. Be there, be square. Because then they would know if they got a hold of the message. They had to be sneaky. Okay, last section for today. So if you'd like to hop over and answer that question, you may. The last section for today is super duper short. That's literally it. It's one paragraph. On civilian intelligence. <sighs> okay. Any hoozles. Number one. Oh, it's the only question. So it says, how did civilians help with the war effort? So remember, a civilian is someone that's not a soldier. It's just like an innocent random person. Civilian intelligence. Individuals and civilian spy networks carried out the most vital American intelligence operations of the Revolutionary War. Men and women whose daily lives and work brought them into proximity, a.k.a. made them their work and lives were really close, with the British military, such as farmers and merchants, fed important information to the American authorities throughout the war. So this is kind of like Abner. So he is a merchant. So he is feeding important information to the American authorities about what's happening like when he sees British uh, soldiers. Some patriots even posed or disguised themselves as loyalists. So as like loyal people to the British government to infiltrate bro pro-British groups. So they would sneak in to the pro-British groups, collecting detailed facts about British military operations and defenses, supply lines, and battle plans. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Okay, so that is the end of the questions. Um, for those of you that are doing all the questions at the end, remember the first question for civilian deaths. What increased the number of civilian deaths for New York City? The first question says, what was the population of New York City? Number two says, how did most soldiers die in the war? For covert operations, the question is, how did the armies disguise their messages? And for civilian intelligence, it says, how did civilians help with the war effort? So, our... Super duper shout outs for Friday um, from Miss Savage's class. Let's see here. Um, from Miss Savage's class, I want to shout out. Let's see here. Shout out to. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs. So shout, because I think this is going to be our last day of um, formal shout out since I'm going to give you all the videos at once after this. So um, shout out to Ariana and Sincere. Um, y'all have been doing super awesome getting on here as much as you can. I know that y'all are working really hard whenever you can. So I do see your hard work. So I'm super, super proud of how hard you've been trying because y'all have been so, so independent and um doing your best to get what work you can done. So I'm super, super proud of that. Um, from Mr. Baker's home room. Let's see here. Shout out to, I don't know, I may be repeating some shout outs, but that's okay. Um, I want to shout out um, Morgan Lowry and Laurence, because both of them are doing a super awesome job as far as their virtual learning. They've really taken responsibility for their own work, made sure that they're getting their own work done, and y'all are being super duper independent, and I'm super proud of the hard work that I've been seeing since we've been doing this virtual learning. Um, for my class, I want to shout out, I want to shout out Abdul and Gabe because again, same thing. Y'all have been doing super awesome getting on as much as you can and I do see your hard work and it is really making me super, super proud. Um, for anybody that I didn't personally shout out, I have this giant board right here and I didn't mark off when I was doing shout outs. So um, I'm super, super proud of everybody that has been sticking with it. If I didn't shout you out personally, I promise you I'm proud of you. I really, really am. Um, y'all have really blown my mind with how much y'all have been working hard and really been 
um, taking your learning into your own hands and I haven't really had to fuss at anybody and I just really cannot tell you how much it's filling my bucket. Um, I have been bragging to any other teachers that are listening. Y'all, the fifth grade teachers are so, so excited to have you because all I've been doing is bragging about how amazing and wonderful my fourth graders are. So, um, y'all really are making me super proud. And if I didn't shout you out personally, I'm really sorry. It's not because I'm not proud. It's because... I just have a whole bunch of people written on this board to try and keep up with everything. So um, keep it up and go hop over to after you get done with your questions because it's the last thing of questions you'll have to do. How exciting. Um, hop over and watch. You can binge watch like you do on Netflix. You know people binge watch an entire show or an entire season on Netflix. You can binge watch chapters 16 through 19 and the follow-up sections for the uh, the follow-up video, which is all the in-between sections, um, after chapter 19, they will be available, um, today. Also, um, I'm going to be posting a lot more read-alouds for enjoyment. Um, I made a deal with, um, the little humans, the little hooligans who were on, um, the Google Meet earlier that every 500 watch hours that I see on my YouTube channel, so right now y'all are only at like 250. Every 500, I will make a video not related to reading. So I might make a slime video. I might make a questions you want to ask your teacher. You can like post anonymous questions. I might make a reacting to TikToks or maybe teaching someone a TikTok. That might be fun. Um, I'll do a fun video and I'll try and do some more of those too this summer. So, um... I'll also do some more read-alouds for enjoyment so that y'all don't have to keep watching the same ones over and over. I'm about to record... Oh, where'd it go? I lost my book. Oh, here it is. Um, this A to Z's mystery book. So I'm going to have some different kinds of books on, available for you on the channel. So if you have any requests, please let me know. Um, as always, I'm about to sign out. So I will catch y'all in the next video. I love you. And um, go change the world. Bye.